Nice Nasso, who has been here in the past. Thank you for coming today. You know, we need some uh, pep, we need some energy, we need some excitement, uh, we need something to get us out of this uh, pandemic. And so Denise is here, and I think you're going to enjoy the music. We've done some jazz events in the past. We used to have Wednesday night vespers, and I would bring in a jazz group every month uh, to perform in the sanctuary, which has great acoustics. And so Denise brought a quartet with her many times, and we always enjoyed it, and so glad to have her back with us. And so, let us worship God together. Thank you, Denise. Well, we always start off with our children's time. A lot of our children are away today. Parents are getting a well-deserved break. And so, but we do have a special guest with us today. So let's have the children come at this time. And we have a, uh, uh, how old now? One year, one year old. So this will be an interesting challenge for me. I... <laughs> well, Welcome. Good to have you with us. Um, where's JJ? Where's he at? What are, you, what are you doing up there? I'm I'm in my special sacred place where I meet with God. Oh, yeah. I like the sanctuary, and this is where God speaks to me. So I'm here during the week where I can pray and look at the sanctuary. Wow. So he spends his whole week up there. Now, here's a special uh, alert. Do not try this at home. Uh, JJ uh, is able to, well, JJ, you explain it. Well, I don't get hurt. I just fall, and it's just like another time for me. Oh, he's a special uh, superhuman kind of person. Whoa. All right, JJ, well, come down. I got to get Henry's help here to... To get J.J. down, uh, don't worry about Henry. If he falls, he can't get hurt. Oh, there we go. Okay, throw him over. Throw him over. Oh, that was fun. Yeah, can I do that again? Uh, well, maybe some other time. So, um, we're talking today about how we all find our special place that God is there for us. And that can be in nature. It can be here in the church as it is for J.J. That's right. That's right. This is where God speaks to me. Or it can be in your bedroom, in your bed, 
or at the dinner table, wherever it is for you, that is where God speaks to us. And so, may you find your special place where God can speak to you, and let's meet our new, hey, hey, I'm JJ, how are you? Hello. He doesn't quite know what to do with that. (laughs) So, thank you for coming today, and we're going to let you go off to Sunday school, and JJ, um, you're going to have to stay down until the end of the service. Okay. All right. Good to be with you. Oh, good to see you too. Oh, you want to, I want to go with you. All right. Well, enjoy your time. Welcome, everyone, to our worship service today. No matter who you are, where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here, whether here in the sanctuary or online, no matter where that might be. Each week, we never know who's watching, and so we welcome all of you today. Um, Just a few quick announcements. Uh, Please sign the registers, if you will, at this time. Um, If you're visiting with us, we have followed the CDC guidelines throughout, and as you know, they came back to Mass again, so we've come back to Mass again, and that's sort of where we are. None of us is thrilled. We look forward to the day when we can say uh, adios to the Mass, because it's uh, hindering, I think, our attendance and our worship for all of us. Uh, We do have a new video technician. Donna today is videoing for us. Welcome, Donna. (laughs) She's going to... uh, Give this a try. You know, Jim was a professional. He had his own production company down in Phoenix, and we were blessed to have him. And so uh, we got to give you a little while to learn. (laughs) I was watching, I won't say what church, I was watching a local church's worship yesterday online, and uh, the preacher was cut off about here at the head. (laughs) And so (laughs) everybody's challenged and trying their best uh, during this time. Uh, We're pleased to have Denise join us today for worship and for music. Denise, welcome back. She's been here many times in the past. And next week we have Joelle Gall who will be here to help us uh, with music. We are, right after church, going to have a new member class right up front. And so if you want to learn more about the church, you don't necessarily have to be somebody who wants to join. You just want to learn more about this place, you're welcome to join us. All of the things we'll cover are down below. On the back, we have uh, our Zoom Bible study every Saturday at 10, Zoom Fellowship every Sunday at 2. Our mission outreach today is the DACA Fund. A couple weeks ago, we had our DACA student here to uh, share with us uh, how much she appreciated all this church has done uh, to help her through college and through these recent uh, years. Um, and from our bylaws, I put in here our membership section so you can peruse that and learn what we uh, have in our official documents about joining the church. The treasurer's tr- report is down below. I invite your attention to that as well. Okay, that's enough announcements. Uh, let us stand and greet one another with the peace of Christ however you wish to do that. <laughs> All right, we are going to begin today with uh, the hymn, God is Here as Your People Meet, which is number 70. 
We're going to sing the first and the last verses. Let us stand. So uh, uh, we may need some help. <laughs> I, I know uh, I know Denise's, uh, Denise's capabilities, so I know you're able to, to lead us in this, but uh, obviously we need help. <laughs> I probably will too. So. Help me. Sovereign God of earth and heaven, in an age of change and doubt Keep us faithful to the gospel Help us work your purpose out Here in this day's dedication All we have to give we who cannot live without you, we adore you, we believe. Please join me in the call to worship. It's found in your bulletin. We come celebrating the joy of worshiping God in our own sacred space. Amen. of your people, we praise your name. We come rejoicing that together we can freely and openly worship our God. Enthroned on the praises of Israel. Hallelujah. We come with delight and jubilation to offer our thanks and praises for God's faithfulness, goodness, and mercy, and to pray for all who gather to praise God. We will proclaim God's word, reading Psalm 122. When they said, let's go to the house of God, my heart leapt for joy. And now we're here, O Jerusalem, inside Jerusalem's walls. Jerusalem, well-built city, built as a place for worship the city to which the tribes ascend, all God's tribes go up to worship to give thanks to the name of God. This is what it means to be Israel. Thrones for righteous judgment are set there, famous David thrones. 
Pray for Jerusalem's peace. Prosperity to all you Jerusalem lovers, friendly insiders, get along. Hostile outsiders, keep your distance. For the sake of my family and friends, I say it again, live in peace. For the sake of the house of God, God, I'll do my very best for you. Now, I know we're all wearing masks, except me, but you can snap your fingers, you can clap your hands, you can get up and stand, sway back and forth. Uh, just enjoy yourselves and please enjoy the song. Wait in the water. Wait in the water, my children. Wait in the water God's gonna trouble the water See that band all dressed in white Wait in the water Must be the band of the Israelites God's gonna trouble that water. See that band all dressed in red. Must be the band that Moses led. God's gonna trouble that water. I say, wait in the water. Wait in the water, my children. Wait in that water, God's gonna trouble the water. See that band all dressed in blue? Well, it must be the band that's coming through. God's gonna trouble the water. Look over yonder. What do you see? A band of angels coming for me. God's gonna trouble that. Water, I say, wait in the water. Wait in the water, my children. Wait in the water. God's gonna trouble that water. If you don't believe, I've been redeemed. Wait in the water. Just see that Holy Ghost a coming for me. God's going to trouble that water. I said, wait in the water. Wait in the water, my children. Wait in that water. God's going to trouble that water. God's going to trouble that water. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Denise. Appreciate that.
For the sake of our visitors today, just a quick intro. We're in a series in August on the Psalms of Ascent, which is 120 to 134 in the book of Psalms. There are 150 Psalms, Psalm 23 probably known by most, but Psalm 120 to 134, not really known all that much. What these were, were songs that the pilgrims sang the three times a year that they were required to go up to Jerusalem to the temple. And so it's sort of like your uh, playlist on your phone as you go for a run or as you travel. They had their own songs back then, and as they traveled, they would sing them. And so today we come to one that is uh, a pilgrim who is arriving in Jerusalem, looking around. You might have to remember most of these people are from the rural countryside, and they come into the majestic Jerusalem, and they are just filled with joy. They know the temple is there, and they've come up to worship. And so the pilgrim says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Now, there are times when we feel that way. Present day, I don't know. I was trying to think of all the ways people would respond to this psalm now. They would say, I was concerned when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. I was anxious, or I'm not going to the house of the Lord right now (laughs) because of this pandemic. And so it really speaks to the full range of emotions that everybody brings as they come to worship. The Psalms are a wonderful example of the full range of emotion. You have Psalms of praise, like this one today. You have Psalms of annoyance and lament, where the psalmist cries out, how long, O Lord, or why, O God? And some of us may be coming with the psalms of lament today. I thought this might be a good time just to to share my frustrations, and perhaps that's where we all are, but it's really a tough time. We thought we were coming out of this. Remember just several weeks ago, we had our masks off because the CDC told us we could, and, and we were ready to get back to normal and move on. And then the Delta variant, variant comes along, and uh, t- they tell us to put our masks back on. And we've always tried to follow the CDC. I know people have different opinions on that, but we thought as a church board that it's probably the best way to to protect ourselves and liability and everything else just to say, well, we're doing what the scientists told us to do. And so we find ourselves coming here today um, with mixed emotions, perhaps. Uh, Some of us, including myself, uh, having a situational depression about what we are facing. Uh, It's not what we would wish, and it's almost like as you're starting to ascent, like these Psalms of Ascent, you get sent back. It'd be kind of like on your way to Jerusalem, you know, you're glad to be going and you're singing and someone says, um, they've had an outbreak of a virus in Jerusalem, you're going to have to turn back. And they all turn back and go home. It, it's sort of that feeling uh, that we all have. Uh, but in addition to I was glad when they told me that we were going to the house of the Lord, There are many other psalms that are reminders to us that we bring whatever we are experiencing to the house of God, sometimes to praise, sometimes to cry out, sometimes to lament. I was thinking today about this church family back in 1919. I don't know how many people were here during those weeks. I don't know if they were still open or what they were doing. They had limited science and communications, so... Not sure what was going on, but if you think about that congregation, whoever was left, they went from that to the Great Depression and then to World War II. So as I thought about all that, I'm like, you know, I I don't really have much to to be uh, depressed about. (laughs) I'm in a pretty good position compared to them. But they are models for us of hanging in there, and so sometimes that's all we can do is kind of hang in there. And so whatever emotion you're bringing with you today, it is legitimate, it is human. And we share all of our human emotions with God, just like the Psalms, the 150 Psalms do. And the pilgrim is entering Jerusalem and looks around and says, wow, 
this is amazing. I, I want to pray for the peace of this town. And then sees the temple and says, wow, there's the presence of God. Things have changed for us as Christians in our modern lives. We don't have one place where we think God might dwell. Although certainly the church is maybe a place that we think of. But the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians 3 actually said that the church is the temple of the Holy Spirit. But in chapter 6 of 1 Corinthians, he says that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And so the change that happened was we moved from a particular place to actually the Spirit residing within us. And so we are the temple as well as the church. And so place might have lost some of its value compared to those ancient Israelites who really wanted to go because that's where they thought God was. But we all still have sacred spaces. Our Native American friends are good reminders to us that there are sacred lands, there are sacred places that they hold very dear, some of which we have unfortunately taken over from them. But there is a, something I think inherent within us that wants to have these sacred special places. And that can be really anywhere you want it to be. It can be in nature. It can be certain places that you go that for you are a reminder of the sacredness of life and perhaps of a special relationship with God. But we all have them and we, we need those sacred spaces. If you go to other nations, Mexico, Spain, Italy, other countries, when you go to the downtown square, there's always the cathedral, right, or the church, very present on the square, reminding everybody there that you know, this is where God resides, and, and we see it every day. How about Prescott? I was thinking of that this week. As you drive into Prescott, first of all, there's no church on the square, right? We've all kind of moved. Well, we didn't move. Other people moved away. And so as you're driving into town from Prescott Valley, what do you see that would be sacred? Well, you see the Church of Christ Scientist right up the street here. And you might wonder, we don't really hear much about them, and you might wonder what goes on there. And then you come down to Larkin Street, and you see this. It is a sacred space. It's a reminder that God may be here. Now, before we put any banners out or signs, you might come by and say, there is an old church. I bet something used to happen there. <laughs> but I think our banners and our doors soften things. I think it, as people come by, they say, okay, there's life there. These are the messages they're trying to share. And I thought on the way home, or the way here today, we could put out a big electronic sign out there. We could. We could have messages flashing all the time, <laughs> take, take advantage of our special spot here as people go by on Gurley. Uh, but something about that just wouldn't quite resonate with us. Um, it's not who we are. And, and so I think what we're doing is probably who we are. We're going to let you know that we are open to everybody here. And if you want to come, come. So as you move past the church, you get down to the square, sort of like that pilgrim moving from the temple to the city of Jerusalem proper. And you look around and what do you see? I think you see kind of a sacred space. You see a courthouse that has been there for a long, long time. It is the seat of justice. I, I served on a uh, grand jury several years ago for four months. So every Wednesday I had to go into the, the courthouse and meet with the grand jury. And this goes on all the time. People are coming there for trials. But it's, it's not only that as the seat of justice, but it's something about even the place. There's only so many communities that I know of, I've been to some, that have a 
court square with trees all around it and lovely grass. That, that's a precious thing. I take a walk every day, and so I walk uh, downtown, and, and then I always come back by the, the, the court square and, uh, before I head back home. And it is, it's just a special gathering place, particularly if you're from Phoenix. Can you imagine you come up here, <laughs> you're burning up, and more often than not, you can sit on the court square with the tree coverings, and, and the temperature is delightful. And so it kind of reminded me of this psalm that this pilgrim goes and he's, he's marveling at Jerusalem and all that's there because he doesn't have it back where he is. And then he sees the temple and the sacred space of God. But we all have these special places and they are sacred. I would argue that our square is sacred also for the monuments that are there, not only to the war veterans but to the, uh, the 19 firefighters who died, and, and so it, it's a special sacred spot. What are your sacred spots? I serve on a committee for our conference, and I may have mentioned this before, I can't remember, but we have candidates come before us who are trying to be ordained. And we're not like they were 100 years ago where they would ask you how many angels can sit on the top of a pin needle. You know, they don't try to trick you anymore. But we do ask questions. And so I've come to have one question that I ask everybody because more often than not, the candidates that come before us haven't really thought through what the church is. Or, or if they have, they're not able to articulate it before us. Because when I ask them about the church, they always say, to a person. The church is community. That's where I find community. That's where I find fellowship. And then my question comes, what's the difference between a church and a dog park? <laughs> I can take my dog to the dog park. I can have wonderful community with my fellow dog owners. And we can talk all about our dogs and we can share this special community. Or I, I walk by the American Legion up here on Pleasant Street and, and I look over there and I see uh, the veterans gather and it is for them a place of fellowship, a place of community, and they serve out of that place. What's the difference between a church and that? And they struggle to answer me. And so at some point I have to say, um, well, you know, when you go to a dog park, you talk about your dogs. When you go to a church, you perhaps talk about God and Jesus. <laughs> Maybe it's too simple, they, they can't get it. Or the sacraments are here at the church, and they represent the presence of God. It's a sacred space. And so, yes, it is different than other places. You can find community here, but you can also find it to be a sacred space where God speaks to you. And the word of God is proclaimed, which in the mystery of the way God works and the spirit works, often the word speaks part of what I'm doing, but often apart from anything I've said or done, the word can speak to you. And so these are the special things that are here that I don't think so much are other places. And that speaks to the sacredness of this space. So yes, you can find God in the countryside, in nature, and in all kinds of other ways, but you can also find God here because this is the institution that God set up for us to gather, to worship, to learn, to grow, and to follow Jesus out into the world. I am pleased now that we are about to sing the old ship of Zion. Um, Zion is another word for uh, Jerusalem, and so as the pilgrims marched, they sang the songs of Zion. And to them, again, Jerusalem, the temple, was the very presence of God, and they, they sang about it. Matter of fact, the, in, the enemies of Israel in uh, 2 Samuel chapter 5 are mocking the Israelites because they've destroyed Jerusalem and they're taking them over. And they say, uh, sing to us the songs of Zion now. <laughs> but these songs of Zion were very important to the Israelites. And so this is the 
old ship of Zion that we are to get on board, an old spiritual. I can't think of anybody better to sing it than Denise. <laughs> and if it's okay, can we just do verse 1 and 2? Because my music only shows verse 1 and 2. Let us stand together. It's the old ship of Zion. It's the old ship of Zion. It's the old ship of Zion. Get on board, get on board. It has landed many a thousand. It has landed many a thousand. It has landed many a thousand. Get on board, get on board. It's the old ship of Zion. It's the old ship of Zion. It's the old ship of Zion. Get on board, get on board. Well, there's no danger in the water. There's no danger in the water. There's no danger in the water. Get on board, get on board. It's the old ship of Zion. It's the old ship of Zion. It's the old ship of Zion. Get on board, get on board. It's the old ship of Zion. Get on board, get on. Very good. I failed to mention at the start that, of course, that was a a spiritual used uh, by African Americans as they hope for the train to come and take them to freedom. And so it has come down to us as uh, the old ship of Zion song. But for them, uh, that was a, a passage to freedom, a passage to what was for them, Jerusalem, or a new life in a new place. And so we remember that today as well. We come now to the prayers of the people. A wonderful and welcoming God, we gather here in our own special place where we worship our God, where together we can share our acts of worship and praise. Today is an opportunity for personal, private prayer and praise, but it also provides the wonderful privilege of shared prayers and praises. So we gather in sincere gratitude to honor the God who gifts us all and provides so many wonderful blessings to us each day and night. However humble or magnificent is the building which we honor as the house of the Lord, it is where we come as God's children to offer our thanks and praises for God's gracious care. And so we are glad to gather together in the God's house. We come rejoicing that together we can freely and openly worship our God, even as we acknowledge that there are many people who do not have this privilege and blessing. Today, we pray especially for them, that in their lack of shared worship, that they are still are able to worship God, if necessary, in secret, offering their prayers of praise and thankfulness for their knowledge of and love of their God, and for God's gracious and merciful love of them as faithful individuals in difficult circumstances. Today we come with joyous delight to offer our thanks and praises for God's mercy, God's goodness, God's faithfulness, and God's acceptance of us as God's own children. We give thanks for all God's holy, love-inspired blessings, 
for the wonderful privilege of knowing we are forgiven by God and that we can offer forgiveness to others and for the especially generous gifts from God that has taught us to trust other people. We pray that we may share these blessings of love, forgiveness, and trust amongst all whom we meet, but especially in our worship. And we ask that God will guide and help us in our shared life of worship and praise. And now we lift up to you the unspoken requests on our hearts. We lift up to you the people of Haiti. We lift up to you the people of Afghanistan, particularly the women and the children. And just as the psalmist prayed for peace, we join together to pray for the peace of our world, for justice to come to so many who are suffering needlessly at the hands of dictators or regimes that do not believe in equality or love or justice or peace. As the psalmist cried out, how long, O Lord, so we cry out, how long will this go on? We pray that your kingdom, your realm would come. Hear us as we pray, as our Savior taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Come now to our morning offering. And due to COVID, we're still not passing the plates, but we have plates back here. We appreciate our online audience that has kept us going as well through this last more than a year now. And we look forward to a coming day when we will all be able to join in uh, worship again. Just on a side note, our restaurant uh, a couple buildings down is looking like it's more and more going to open. It was just in the paper, perhaps by September it'll get going, so we uh, are pleased with that. And again, thank you all for helping to support us. May we hear the prayer of dedication. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> that is my fault. <laughs> Look at the bulletin. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, once again, uh, this is a great, uh, great song for today. People get ready. We've been on quite a journey today, even with COVID. We've been on a ship. Now we're going to get on a train. Uh, the words of this song are very special. They're very inspiring, and I hope you enjoy it. People get ready. There's a train a coming. You don't need no baggage. You just get on board. All you need is your faith to hear the diesels humming. Don't need no ticket. You just thank the Lord. People get ready. For the train to Jordan Picking up passengers From coast to coast Faith is the key So open the doors And board them There's hope for all Among the loved the most There ain't no room for the hopeless sinner Who would hurt all mankind To just save his own 
Have pity on those whose chances are growing thinner Cause there's no hiding place against the kingdom's throne I say, people get ready, there's a trainer coming. Don't need no baggage, you just get on board. All you need is your faith to hear the diesels humming. Don't need no ticket, you just thank. You just thank the Lord. And our prayer of dedication, people get ready. There's a train a coming. Don't need no ticket, just thank the Lord. Loving God, we share what we have because you share so abundantly with us. May our sharing be an act of thanksgiving and praise for all you have done and all you will continue to do for us. We dedicate these gifts and offer ourselves to your service. Bless us and our gifts that we might be a source of help, hope, and love to a world in need. With grateful hearts, we pray. Amen. Appreciate all of you coming to be with us today. We do have communion down front for those who wish to receive it. Right after the church service, we'll be having our people inquiring about uh, membership or just wanting to learn about the church. We'll meet down here down front. And we are for a little while, kind of suspending our refreshments and food next door because cases are once again on the rise, but as soon as that levels off, we'll bring back the, the uh, after church time as well. Notice that after the benediction, we are going to sing together, leaning on the everlasting arms. We certainly need that. We'll sing the first and the last verse of that, 471. But now, may we hear the benediction. We all need sacred spaces in our lives. May you find yours today, this week, these coming months, for we all need it to get through this time. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit go with you. Amen. Let us stand and sing, leaning on the everlasting arms, the first and the last verse. We've always done this in the past. And we're still doing it today, regardless of the COVID or the masks. I want to thank all of you. You've made me very happy. I rejoice in the fact that we've all been here together today. I hope it's lifted your spirits and you can go away with a smile in your heart.
Again, thank you so much. You've made my heart smile.